Hi, I am Dr. S. Ravi, Professor, Department of Chemistry, Karpagam Academy of Higher Education. So I am happy to be here to brief you about the Green Chemistry course. Green Chemistry was introduced by Paul Anastas in the year 1991. In the past and even in the present, chemistry was misused in so many ways. Misused in the sense that is by the release of pollutants, toxic substances, production of non-biodegradable materials. It resulting harm to environment, living beings and human beings. So, chemistry or chemical science must turn away to change this situation by avoiding the exploitations of limited resources and production of products that ultimately end up in wastes. Fortunately, at present, chemical sciences and industry is moved steadily in the direction of environment friendliness and resource sustainability. So, the practice of chemistry in a direction which maximizes its benefits while eliminating or greatly reducing its adverse effect on the environment has become to be known as green chemistry. In general, the green chemistry, it deals with the invention and the design and very often it involves the use and generation. That is the phrase use and generation. That is, it not only focuses on the materials generated but also includes the materials used for the process. Further, green chemistry in addition to the science it is also a philosophy and nearly a religion it encourages new attitude and approaches to chemistry it takes a broad view of the chemistry and integrates a wide variety of techniques so in this green chemistry course so we have 14 lectures and each and every lecture is of 10 to 15 minutes duration. To start with, the lecture one, it deals with the green chemistry theory, which comprises of the introduction, role of chemistry, and need for green chemistry. Followed by lecture two, the 12 principles of the green chemistry, part one, that is prevention of waste, atom economy, economy less hazardous chemical synthesis and designing safer products. In lecture 3, let us see some more principles of the green chemistry, part 2, that is safer solvents and auxiliaries, design of energy conserved one, then use of renewable feedstocks and reduce derivatives. In the lecture 4, the last four principles of the green chemistry that is the catalysis, design for degradation, then real-time analysis, pollution prevention, and inherently safer chemistry for accidental prevention. In the lecture 5, let us talk about the atom econ economy, the concept of atom economy, and how to calculate the atom economy of different types of reactions. So in the lecture 6, let us say something about designing a chemical synthesis which involves some important techniques and directions which is used in green chemistry. In lecture 7, it is about the microwave chemistry with microwave effect, microwave energy sources and the tools for the synthetic chemistry along with its mechanism. In lecture 8, let us see some of the reactions, microwave assisted reactions taking place in organic solvents like esterification, freeze rearrangement, Diels-Alder reaction, alkylation, oxidation and reduction. In lecture 9, microwave assisted reactions in aqueous media and solid state reactions. 
In lecture 10, we will see a comparison between the microwave heating and conventional heating and some of the limitations of the microwave chemistry. In lecture 11, let us see about ultrasound chemistry, some sonochemical reactions, sources of ultrasonifications, and in lecture 12, let us see about the green solvents and ionic liquids. Green solvents, proliferation of solventless reactions, and something about the ionic liquids. In lecture 13, let us see about the catalysis, the types of catalysis, application of catalysis, the entrains used in green chemistry. Finally, to end with, in lecture 14, let us talk something about the real world cases. So, in today's class, that is, let us see about the introduction of green chemistry. Green chemistry, it means preventing pollution and sustaining earth. Chemistry has done a lot of things to this humankind. It has an important role to play in achieving sustainable civilization on earth. Some of the benefits carried out by the chemical industries are antibiotics and other medicines, followed by the fertilizers and pesticides, which is used widely in agriculture, and India being an agricultural country, mainly depends on fertilizers and pesticides. Then we have given enough amount of plastic materials, nylon, rayon, polyester and other synthetic materials, then gasoline and other fuels and we have contributed a lot in water purification. Environmental problems like biological contaminations, they were solved only by chemists. So the industry has produced many products that improved our lives, which we depend. So it has contributed to the phenomenal, that is the life expectancy, and also it has catered all the needs, all our comforts. Then, this is on one hand. On the other hand, let us see some of the harmful effects. That's how it has affected the pollution. So in the year 1930s and 1950s, a river bed near Niagara Falls. So it acted as a chemical and plastic, that's a dump yard. That old canal, after a few years, in that place, uh, schools and cottages were built. Suddenly, 82 chemicals it got leaked from that place and in a, it's, it has affected the people who are living in and around. That is a high birth effect incidences and a nervous diseases among the children were reported. Then the Cuyahoga River in Hoyo becomes so polluted that a river, it catches fire. Not only once or twice, at least 12 times the river has caught fire. Then one more accident, that is the accidental release of chemicals, including dioxin. It was observed in Servaso, Italy in the year 1976, which leads to death of farm animals and long-term health problems for many local residents. Then recently, 1984, a plant accident in Bhopal, Union Carbide of India Limited, a pesticide manufacturing industry, it has released methyl isocyanate and nearly 4,000 people died in that accident. And many people, they suffered from genetic disorders. So these are few incidents where chemistry becomes responsible for causing the pollution. So, to meet the demands of modern civilization, we need various types of chemical products. And to make those products, we need a variety of chemical industries. So, these 
very often led to the formation of hazardous substances and sometimes we are forced to use the hazardous substances. So to prevent or minimize the formation of those hazardous substances, the chemists are required to invent novel new technologies. So this need as I inspired the generation of a new branch of chemistry called green chemistry. It follows the principle prevention is better than cure. Now let us discuss the purpose of green chemistry. So one, it develops eco-friendly chemical technology. It aims to have environment friendly technologies that is to develop environmentally benign chemistry. Secondly, the replacement of organic solvents and the use of the waste products. So it sees to that, so that it can be, we can devise greener reaction conditions and to avoid the formation of byproducts so that waste is not produced in the initial state itself. Then it strongly suggests the use of renewable feedstock that is chemicals ought to be taken from the biomass which is a renewable source rather than a non-renewable source that is crude oil. Nowadays most of the chemicals are synthesized or taken away from the petroleum products. And next to minimize the energy consumption, so it aims and it strongly encourages to keep mild or modest reaction conditions. That is, it recommends the reactions to be carried out under ambient pressure and temperature so that the energy consumption becomes reduced. Then it suggests to use more eco-friendly chemical products. That is, even if the products what we have invented earlier, if they are hazardous in nature, we should try to replace them. So in replacing them, we should see to that there is no compromise on the quality or the characteristics of those materials. Then it encourages the four R's, that is the reduction, recycling, reuse and recovery. So with this background, let us define what is green chemistry. Green chemistry is the design of chemical products and process that reduce or eliminate the use and or the generation of the hazardous substances. So Paul Anastas is the father of the chemist green chemistry and his co-worker Warner have formulated 12 principles of green chemistry as the guidelines so that everyone can practice these two 12 principles so that we can end up in a safe environment. So to encourage the chemists who are doing, who are, that's, who are protecting the environment, a prestigious presidential green chemistry challenge awards have been introduced in the year 1995-96 by US, that is EPA, Environmentally Protection Agency. So, let us see something about what are all the 12 principles of the green chemistry. We will see in detail in the subsequent classes, but to have a mention over the principles in this class, the first principle is prevention. That's the prevention is better than cure and all the other principles, they depend on this first principle that is better to prevent waste than to treat or clean the waste once it is formed. The second principle is atom economy. Third principle is less hazardous chemical synthesis. Fourth one is designing of safer chemicals. Fifth one is safer solvents and auxiliaries. Sixth one to design for energy efficiency. Then seventh one is that is use of renewable feedstocks. Eighth one is reduce derivatives. Ninth one is about catalysis. The tenth principle is designing for degradation. Then the eleventh principle is about real-time analysis 
for pollution prevention and twelfth the last principle is inherently safer chemistry for accident prevention. So with this we will end the today's class and in the subsequent classes we will see in detail about all these principles. So to summarize that is in this class we have seen what is green chemistry, what is the definition for the green chemistry, what is the need for the green chemistry, of course what are all the objectives of green chemistry and what are all the 12 principles of green chemistry. So hope you understood all these things and in the next subsequent classes we will see in detail about all these 12 principles so that you can understand better and you can be green chemist, you can follow these two principles. Thank you.